okay uh, in space physics last time we talk about the red shift and the concept of the galaxies that how galaxies are moving away from uh, the solar system or how they are moving from the other bodies so we talk about the concept of the red shift that is uh, defined with the help of doppler's effect that when a source starts to move away from any observer or when it is moving towards any other observer so wavelength and frequency both starts to change for both observer if frequency or wavelength for one observer starts to increase so definitely for the other observer it starts to decrease so uh, these are the concepts related to the redshifts and the doppler effect we also talk about this spectrum and uh, there is a topic related to uh, the big bang concept so basically we all know about big bang theory that uh, there is like a small region and from that a small region the universe starts to expand all the planets all the solar system all the galaxies are expanding from uh, that is small region and the dates uh, like it was around 14 billion years ago the universe starts to expand according to the big bang theory so around 14 billion years ago the universe began from a very small from a very small region plus the temperature of that small region is extremely high and it is also this region is also very dense So basically, uh, this was the theory taken by uh, the Big Bang and in the Big Bang theory, it explains the idea that universe starts to begin 14 billion years ago and it started from a small region and the temperature of that region is extremely hot and that region is also very dense. And after that, what happens, there is like a giant explosion. And uh, you can consider this example like if we have a balloon. So we know that in balloon, air molecules are filled and they are contained in a balloon. So basically, uh, when the balloon got burst, so what happens? The air molecules uh, restricted in the region of that balloon area or the air molecules are trapped in that uh, balloon. So they starts to expand uh, from that specific area or from that specific region. So same happens with uh, the universe, like all the things are trapped in a small dense uh, region and there is a giant explosion and after that explosion, all uh, the bodies, all the galaxies and all the solar systems are going to be expand uh, day by day. So this concept is known as the Big Bang Theory. And uh, this is like a theoretical idea uh, that we are talking about. You can see uh, this is estimated value. So uh, this is the concept of the Big Bang Theory. That how it starts to happen and how the universe starts to expand. 
and each point in the universe starts to expand away from each other. And this process is not stopped uh, day by day, time by time. The universe is still expanding. And they also calculated this value with the help of uh, the light here. Like if you have some satellites and you just move their satellites to the maximum range, uh, whatever we can choose the distance over there. Just like in, in our daily life, we use the concept of the sound to measure the speed of the sound with uh, two observers. One observer produced sound, second observer used the stopwatch to record the time. So same we use uh, in the space. This is just for the idea that how we find out this air. That a uh, universe is so old like 14 billion years ago. So if we measure some specific distance with the help of light air in the space. And it is still expanding day by day. So they just take uh, like uh, readings on the daily basis. So it will help them to show that if distance is increasing. So definitely time to reach that point is still increases. Let's suppose initially you have uh, two points, point A and point B. And let's suppose B is moving away from A. So definitely after some time, you observe that the distance between A and B is increasing. And definitely light will take more time to travel this distance as compared to the second one. And then you observe on another day. So this B point is now more away from A. So again, light will take more time as compared to the previous observation. Because this B point is continuously expanding. It is moving away from point A. So in this way, this is just for the idea that we can identify that something is expanding, something is moving away. So if one body is expanding, one body is moving away. So definitely all the other bodies of the space, all the galaxies are also moving away from each other. So this is the idea taken by the Big Bang. So each point expands away. from others okay so uh, we all know about some big bang uh, theory we already studied in basic sciences but uh, in this chapter there are two concepts like two evidence to prove that what is the proof of this big bang theory and what is the evidence to prove this big bang theory so there are two different evidence The one evidence we explain with the help of the redshift that we already studied and we know that how to explain with the idea of the redshift. And the second is CMBR basically CMBR means cosmic microwave background radiations. So these radiations are also the evidence for the Big Bang theory. We will also discuss that how these two uh, factors are the evidence for the Big Bang. So basically, uh, first if we talk about the redshift, so redshift is easy concept to understand because we already talk about it and it is very simple to understand. Redshift. So with the help of redshift, we can explain the evidence of the Big Bang. And we will explain like this. Uh, the last time. We discussed the diagram of this uh, pattern. And in this electromagnetic spectrum, it helps us to understand the idea of uh, the bodies or the universe moving away from each other. So when we got a uh, electromagnetic spectrum like this, so definitely with the help of uh, the red region or the lines greater than in the red region helps to understand the idea. 
that bodies are moving away from each other and the spectrum is shifting towards red color. So this is the concept we use for the red shift to explain the idea of the Big Bang. Because a Big Bang is a theory and uh, how we got proof that it's Big Bang happens or not. So in scientific terms or in scientific knowledge, so there are some evidence also that uh, supports the Big Bang theory. But it's still, uh, it is like on the theory basis, uh, still the scientists are working because day by day, time by time, a uh, universe is expanding. So when something is, is expanding, so you are not able to find out the extreme point of that. So that's why there is no like certain specific calculation for it, for it to find out any specific value or find out any specific distance from one body to another to prove this evidence with the values. So in these two diagrams, uh, we discuss when light is coming from the near object, when light is coming from the distant galaxy. So when light uh, is coming out from the distant galaxy, so we will get uh, more lines in the red region, just like this second point. And when light is coming from the near body, just like the sun, so the spectrum will be completely different from the other. So uh, for the red shift, Redshift provide the evidence for the Big Bang Theory because it is observed. When the spectral lines Spectral lines mean same black line in the previous diagram that we studied. From distant galaxy. Move closer. to the red end of the spectrum. So in this way, we can explain the concept of the red shift. And why this happens that why uh, the spectral lines are moving towards the red region. So the reason is this happens because light waves are stretched by the expansion of the universe. So basically the first point is like understandable. We know that if we stretch the rubber band also, so definitely one point of rubber band is moving away from the other point. So it is happening because we are stretching that rubber band. So same happens uh, with the spectral lines. If universe is expanding, so definitely spectral uh, lines or the light waves are also uh, shown in the stretch form, just like in the diagram. So this point is like understandable that how it is happening. And when we stretch uh, the light waves, so what happens? the wavelength increases and frequency 
decreases. So uh, we observe these spectral lines in this pattern because uh, light waves are in a stretch form because of the expansion of the universe. And we know that during expansion, distance increases, it means wavelength increases and frequency starts to decrease. So uh, this is the indication that galaxies are moving away from each other. That's why we observe this stretching in the light waves. So this indicates that the galaxies are moving away. from other and secondly uh, the light spectrum produced by distant galaxies are also red shifted and that red color itself uh, tell you that in red color like in the rainbow color in red we have greater wavelength so when they are red shifted, so it means uh, they are in the region of greater wavelength. So again, you will get the same idea that uh, galaxies or the bodies are moving away from each other. That's why the light spectrum uh, formed by the distance galaxies are red shifted because they are moving away. And it means... the further away a galaxy the faster it is moving away from the earth So uh, this is the explanation for uh, the red shift that how we explain or how we support the idea of the Big Bang with the help of the red shift. And the second is the CMBR. CMBR means the cosmic. microwave background radiations so this is called a cmbr So basically, uh, after the redshift, there is another model of CMBR that supports the concept of the Big Bang theory. 
and basically this C M B R you can see uh, there is microwave. So microwave is also the part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So C M B is also electromagnetic radiation uh, that emits out from the early stages of the universe. And it has also a wavelength of around one millimeter. So we know that the range of the microwave is also in millimeter. So when we are getting the wavelength in millimeters, so that will uh, that is an also evidence of the microwaves. So we know that after microwaves, we have uh, radio waves from visible light. If we move towards the greater wavelength, so we have infrared microwave radio waves. So radio waves, we studied that they have the longest wavelength. So microwaves also consist of a greater wavelength. So uh, it also gives you the idea that the radiations we are getting from uh, the other parts of the universe. So that is actually in the range of microwave. So it means that they are in greater wavelength region. It means also it supports the same idea just like the redshift. And it also gives you the concept that still the universe is expanding. So CMBR, it is a type of electromagnetic radiation. which is early stages of the universe so uh, from the old uh, time or from the old ages when uh, they are discovering they are working on this concept so the bodies that they observe so in that old bodies they found some radiations that is also the part of electromagnetic radiations and the wavelength of those radiations are around one millimeter. That is the range of microwaves. That why it is also called cosmic microwave background. So microwave tells you the region or the length of the wave that is emitting out from that. Uh, the early stages of the universe or the part that uh, the scientists found from the early stages of the universe. So the wavelength is around. one millimeter making it a microwave so that's why uh, they proposed this name cosmic microwave background radiation because background we know that we studied this concept in Nuclear physics also, background radiations are uh, naturally available radiations uh, in our atmosphere that are coming from the sun, from the building, from the underground rocks. So that's uh, in the same manner, these are the radiations coming out from uh, the early stages or the bodies that present in the early stages of the universe. So that's why it is also uh, in the region of microwave. So basically, uh, when astronomers discovered this thing, so uh, they got the radiations and that radiations are in the region of microwave. So this is also like the evidence of the Big Bang because again, the main concept is the expansion and expansion takes place 
when uh, something is like stretching or moving away from something or from any other body. So when it is moving away or it is stretching, so definitely the length increases. So that's why this cosmic microwave background radiations also provides you the evidence for the Big Bang. So uh, these are some concepts related to uh, the idea of the Big Bang. And if we consider some questions also from this space physics, just like last time we discussed one question related to uh, the red shifted. And also it is related to the formation of the star that how stars are in a stable part of its cycle or its life. Now you can see uh, we have another question just like the same. So uh, in this question, they are asking the same idea. That describe and explain how a stable star is formed. So how to explain this for a three mark or what are the points that you mention in this? So if we talk about uh, the description and the explanation that how the stable star is formed. So when a cloud of gas and dust comes together, Okay, so I got one answer in the chat. Hydrogen gas comes together, attracted by gravity. Protostar is formed and temperature of hydrogen gas increases. Okay. And then uh, it caused inward force caused by the gravitation is balanced by outward. Okay. Right. So uh, basically, you know the process we already discussed in the previous question, that is also the same. Uh, we know that it is started from the hydrogen and that hydrogen uh, combines in form of fusion reaction to get uh, the helium. And initially it is started when the gas end. Dust particles.
So you also mentioned the name of the stages of the star that we studied that protostar uh, main sequence star because main sequence is the stable form of the star. So basically they are asking about uh, that stage also. So a protostar is formed. And in that proto start the temperature. Inside the proto star. Increases. So that it supports fusion of hydrogen. To helium. And when the outward force of fusion is balanced by inner force of gravity star is considered as a stable So this is the concept of uh, the stable star. And in the next part, so uh, describe and explain what can be deduced from uh, CMBR, the same part that we talk about, that is the evidence of the Big Bang. So how you describe and explain for three marks and what we deduce from this CMBR. So basically, uh, these are the radiations that produced at the birth of the universe the same concept at the early stages of the universe so that is produced at the birth of universe And which were light under the region
of microwaves and these radiations are observed throughout in the space which is also the evidence of expansion of universe So in simple words, you can explain this idea uh, Yes, your previous answer is right, but uh, in the start and at the end, you just mentioned uh, like both forces will balance each other. So that will produces the stable uh, state of the star. So that will like complete your statement, right? like the closing statement for your answer. So then your answer will be completed for three marks. Because you mentioned the process, that is right. That is the main process happening uh, in the formation or to make the star stable. So that is right. The radiation pre is present all around the CM bar I made from, yes. So, uh, and the second part is very easy. You just mentioned that uh, these are the radiations uh, that produce at the birth or at the early stages of the universe. And these radiations are available uh, throughout in the universe. So that is also the evidence of expansion of universe. And one more thing uh, that it lies under the region of microwave. So that's why it is also Cosmic microwave background radiation. Okay, let's try uh, this question also. In this question, uh, it is related to the space also. In a space, an interstellar cloud of dust and gas collapse to form a protostar. The same thing that we discussed. The cloud contains hydrogen. And uh, describe the energy transfers that take place as the cloud uh, collapse and forms the protostar. So you need to mention uh, the energy. Okay, gravitational potential energy to kinetic overall internal energy decreases, okay. Okay, so your answer is gravitational to kinetic and overall internal energy decreases, right? Energy transfers takes place like from 
gravitational potential energy to the kinetic energy because gravitational potential is converting into kinetic so that's why internal energy also And uh, in some questions now, you are also uh, getting like mixed concept related to the space physics and the nuclear reaction also because fusion is uh, also included in the space physics. So you will also get mixed questions from nuclear and space. Like in B part, the collapse results in a nuclear reaction in the protostar. That involves the isotope of hydrogen 3. And the isotope of hydrogen 3 is radioactive and it decays by beta particle emission. So state how the nuclei of isotopes of same elements are different. So basically this is a simple question related to the isotope. So we know that in isotope we have different number of neutrons. Yes. So we have different number of neutrons. So this is the difference. And in the second part, explain why hydrogen 3 cannot decay by alpha particle emission. So why hydrogen 3 cannot decay by alpha particle emission? Because we know that in alpha particle we have two protons. And two neutrons. But in uh, hydrogen 3 you know that there is only one proton. So that's why this uh, hydrogen 3 isotope uh, cannot decay by alpha particle. Because hydrogen 3 only has one proton. And alpha particle. contains two protons. So there are not enough protons uh, for the alpha particle in hydrogen 3. And in third part, complete the equation for the decay uh, of hydrogen 3 to an isotope of helium. So hydrogen 3 emits, uh, sorry, decays to 
an isotope of helium and we have to complete this equation so for beta definitely we know there will be minus 1 and 0 All right and for helium we have to but for uh, helium there is one problem uh, we have only uh, three on the top right because there are only three nucleons available so that's why we will write two and three because in number of proton uh, we know that we have one only and uh, that one neutron converts into one neutron and one proton but on uh, in the number of uh, nucleons on the top we only have three so that three will remain three for helium also right so it will be like isotope of helium that's why it is mentioned isotope of helium it is not the exact helium because it consists of different number of neutrons protons is same Two protons but neutrons are different that's why we are getting three on the top and in question it is also mentioned isotope explain how the nuclear reaction in the protostar stops further collapse as the protostar becomes a stable star so initially we started from a collapsing process and how the nuclear reaction in the protostar stops further collapse So uh, we also discussed this concept that uh, we have high temperature in the core. So nuclear reaction. produces a high temperature in coal. And again, we know that uh, the outward force balances the inward force. So the outward force Nuclear fusion occurs, hydrogen gas fuses to form helium gas, inward force caused by, yes. So again, we have to mention the same thing. Because we know that for fusion reaction, we required high temperature. So that's why we are getting high temperature to start that reaction and the outward force due to high temperature. balances the inward force of gravitation the star And in the last part, the cloud of dust and the gas that collapse also contains atoms of heaviest element. So again, with dust and gas uh, collapse also contains atoms of heaviest element. State which part of the life cycle of a star is responsible for the production of the heaviest element. 
so you just need to mention the name of that uh, stage of in the life cycle of a star in which we have heaviest element or production of heaviest element supernova right so we have a uh, supernova because red super giant explodes So supernova is the answer and from that from this life cycle you can see super uh, red giant converts into supernova and supernova also like the same dust and uh, that gas particles so they are also asking about the concept of dust and the gas so in supernova you are getting the same thing Right, and that is also because of heavy elements.